Welcome, friends and collectors, to another episode of Diecast Emporium Military Mondays, brought to you by my friends at smallscalehobbies.com. If you haven't yet checked them out, I cannot recommend them enough. Visit the website you see in front of you, smallscalehobbies.com, for everything military scale model related. Not only the models from everything from World War II all the way up to current day stuff, but decals, paints, everything you would need to build those models. Alright, today we're going to be taking a look and learning a little bit about the Oshkosh Defense Hemet M983A4LET, which stands for the Light Equipment Transporter. So this vehicle, again, part of the Hemet family, serves as the prime mover for light-duty tactical equipment and vehicles, which include, but are not limited to, the Stryker series, the M870 series, and MRAP family of vehicles. So, what powers this very large tractor? Well, you may have guessed, but it's powered by a 500 horsepower Caterpillar C15 engine. And the truck is rated for use with trailers up to 113,000 pounds of gross weight. It has a crew of two people, and this version has the up-armored cab, which is the newer versions of these trucks. And the latest version that is in service is this one, the A4 version, and it has been in service with the United States military since 2008. Okay, that's a little bit of information about the real vehicle. Let's turn our attention now to the model that you see in front of you. So the kit is by Trident Miniatures. Here is the box. Uh, you can see a picture of the front of the truck that is inside the box. This is a resin 187 or HO scale kit. The item number is 87222. You can purchase this on smallscalehobbies.com if you are interested in buying it. Uh, this kit is not easy. This is a very challenging kit. Um, Trident kits historically are very challenging. They're not easy to do. A lot of the parts don't fit very well to begin with. And if you are just getting into this hobby, I always recommend this. Don't start out with a Trident kit. Start out with, you know, a Rocco uh, Mini Tanks kit and work your way up from there. But when you're done, you should get something that looks sort of, kind of like this. Now, this one does not have a couple of the accessories put on, such as the rear mud flaps and a couple other things that are left off of it. This is painted in Tamiya Light Sand, and the wheels are painted in Tamiya Black Rubber, which is the color I like to use for the tires. I did put the mirrors on, as well as the front-facing mud flaps that you see here. And I also colored the fifth wheel in black, so it gives it the look that it has a little bit of grease on it. You can see the winch, which I put on, is also black. Here's your spare tire. This is an 8x8 vehicle, meaning that all eight tires are driven and powered. I already alluded to this a little bit earlier, but as you can see from the cab, this is a up-armored version of this truck. These are usually... Um, in the supply lines, but as you probably know from Afghanistan, Syria, Iraq, the supply convoys are just as much of a target as anything else is. There's no such thing as front lines anymore. Uh, so these supply convoys, these transporter trucks, are often an easy hit for improvised explosive devices, RPG attacks, uh, light arms, uh, ambushes, all kinds of fun stuff. So that's why you see a lot of these tactical trucks with up-armored cabs nowadays, especially in combat zones. The wheels do roll, as you can see here. Some will roll better than others. And that's also something that I like to point out. When you're doing this, um, make sure that your wheels are all at the same level. On here, mine are not, but they're good enough for government work, pun intended. Um, it's very difficult to get all these axles and wheels to line up on these Trident kits. I don't know why that is, but... Very few of them have come out perfect for me, and I'm still learning. I just try and get better and better with each one of these kits that I do. Uh, I did paint your lights, your running lights, your indicators. Obviously painted the windows and everything black. You could cut those all out if you wanted to and put in some clear plastic or whatever you want to use for your windows. The price of this kit, as of the time that I'm filming this video, you can still get it from smallscalehobbies.com. It is $37.99, not bad value. The kit does just come with this, the tractor, but also available. You can get this. This is a Mini Tanks um, Lowboy flatbed trailer, which you will often see this truck transporting. So let's go ahead and zoom back out here if we can. There we go. So let's get both of these in the frame. Pardon me for just a moment. Here we go. 
So the two of them make a great display, and I listed off a few of the equipment that you can see on this truck in the real world. One of them was the MRAP family of vehicles. I have one of those. I brought out just the one that was closest to me, and uh, you can see this in a future edition of Diecast and Prime Military Mondays as well. This is a 3D printed uh, Max Pro MRAP, and there you go. Makes a pretty convincing and interesting display. That'll do it for this week's episode of Diecast Emporium Military Mondays. Thank you to everyone that watches these videos. I really hope that these do gain traction and uh, end up becoming a popular series on this channel. I try to do my research. I try to make these models look halfway decent, let you know what's out there. Uh, and it's certainly a fun hobby to get into. And it's a very, very affordable hobby as well uh, when compared to nearly everything else I do on this channel. So there you go. Thank you guys again for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and share it with your friends. And take a look at your screen right now for other episodes in the Diecast Emporium Military Monday series. Thanks again, guys. Take care. Be well. I'll see you in the next review.